Good morning Year 10. Today what we're going to do is we're going to look at monoclonal antibodies. Key things we're going to look for today is to be able to recall what antibodies are and what they're like um, and then we're going to look at what monoclonal antibodies are specifically and how they're made um, and also explain how they can be used in one specific example in terms of pregnancy testing as one example of their use and then next lesson you're going to look at other uses of monoclonal antibodies and their pros and cons and all those sorts of things. So we split this lesson in two. So the first little activity I'd like you to do is actually just have a think about what we've done previously on antibodies and antibiotics to make sure you can compare the two. So the next slide is a little starter I want you to think about. So here we've got this table. I want you to think about what type of molecules they are, what they're made by, do they cause immunity to infection, are they specific for individual microbes, can they work on any foreign organism? How they work? So give yourself five minutes. If you want to write some answers in the back of your book, that's fine. Or just think about the answers. Give yourself five minutes and just pause briefly here and then restart the video and I'll go through them. OK, so key thing, antibiotics, lots of different types of chemicals um, such as penicillin, and streptomycin, whereas antibodies are specific proteins made by lymphocytes. Antibiotics come from fungi mainly, but also some bacteria produce them to kill off other microorganisms. Antibodies are produced by your lymphocytes or your white blood cells. Do they cause immunity to infection? Antibiotics don't. Remember, they're just killing bacteria in your body. They're not actually helping your immune system do anything really, not stimulating your immune system. But antibodies do because you produce memory cells from those lymphocytes. You don't get immunity if you're injected just with those antibodies, remember. So that's a slightly odd question there. So as long as your, your own immune system has been stimulated, then yes, you will get immunity. Are they specific? Well, antibiotics are not. They just tend to work on a number of different bacteria, depending on the type of antibiotics, whereas antibodies are specific for a particular antigen, which has got the right shape that it can match up to. Remember, the antibody and the antigen have to be complementary shapes and bind to each other. That's why different microbes have to have different antibodies produced against them because they've got different shaped antigens. Can they work on any foreign organism? Well no, antibiotics will only really work on bacteria, whereas antibodies will work on anything that your lymphocytes can recognise as foreign. So it could be a fungus, could be a virus, could be a bacterium, or it could be even a uh, protist like malaria. Antibiotics, how do they work? Remember, they tend to disrupt the metabolism, the chemical reactions going on inside the cell, whereas antibodies bind specifically to antigens on the microbes, clump them together, cause them to burst, or increase the rate of phagocytosis by other white blood cells. Hopefully, that's a useful little review. If you want to print this out from the PowerPoint, that's absolutely fine. Now we're going to move on and look at antibodies and their structures to remind you about that and how that then links into monoclonal antibodies. So just a reminder, antibodies then are protein molecules, okay, and they have specific regions um, that combine to the antigen. Now this is more detail than you need at GCSE, but this is just so you can see what they are. Okay, so they have this region here that combines to the antigen and their specific shape depending on the antigen that the lymphocytes that made them have been exposed to. At the other end, you've actually got a region that's um, always the same in all antibodies. And this region here um, can have things bound to them and attached to them. So, for example, it could be a drug or a radioactive chemical used to treat a disease or something like that. Um, and when you do your finding out about um, the use of monoclonal antibodies, you can find out about that a bit more. OK, um, so how do we make these things called monoclonal antibodies and what are they? So monoclonal antibodies simply means that they are identical to each other and they've been produced from a single type of white blood cell. Actually, a lot of your immune response is what we call polyclonal. In other words, bacteria and viruses have multiple different antigens, so you'll get a range of different antibodies produced that are specific to that microbe. But what we're talking about here is making one particular type of antibody from one particular type of white blood cell. And we make them by um, exposing mice to the antigen, collecting their lymphocytes and fusing them with cancer cells. And the next little animation will talk to you about 
how and why that's done. So what we do, we take our chemical that we want to produce antibodies against. So for example, it might be a protein that a cancer cell produces, or it might be a hormone that we want to test for, any kind of molecule that we can. And what we do is we take that molecule and we inject it into our mouse, and the mouse will be stimulated to produce antibodies to the immune system. It's white blood cells we stimulate to produce antibodies, and we then collect those lymphocytes from the spleen of the mouse. The spleen is just an area where lots of white blood cells are stored. Now, this lymphocyte here could produce lots of antibodies. However, they won't divide outside of the mouse's body forever and ever and ever. In fact, they can't do it and they'll just die. So what we need to do is we need to make them immortal. So what you do is you take myeloma cells, which are cancer cells, and these are cells that can divide uncontrollably. That's what cancer is, if you remember. And we fuse them together and they form a new type of cell called a hybridoma. Now this hybridoma cell is immortal, it's like a cancer cell, in other words it can keep reproducing, dividing by mitosis, and it can also produce the antibodies because it has the characteristics of both cells now. And what that means is that these hybridoma cells are able to reproduce many, many times and clone themselves, and they'll start to secrete the antibodies that we want. Now there'll be some other steps here, they'll need to go on, we'll need to kill off any other um, lymphocytes that are not um, hybridomas, there'll be some selection going on here, but this is your basics. So we take a molecule, inject into the mouse, collect the lymphocytes and fuse them with the myeloma cells to form hybridomas. The hybridomas then clone themselves so that, and they start producing lots and lots and lots of the antibody. So that's how we make monoclonal antibodies. Now the next slide is going to look at how we use monoclonal antibodies um, in the pregnancy test. Okay, so in pregnancy testing, when a woman is pregnant, um, a hormone called HCG, or human chorionic gonadotrophin, we just call it HCG, um, is produced and some of it comes out in the urine of the woman when they're pregnant. And this is how we, what we're going to test for. This is the molecule okay, that will have been injected into the mouse to make it produce antibodies against it. So then what we have is specific monoclonal antibody, or MAB is a shortened term for monoclonal antibody, um, that is specific to the HCG, okay, and one of them has a little blue bead. Remember I said that the, um, not the non-specific end of the antibody can have things bound to it, so in this case we've got a little blue bead attached to it. All right, so this antibody is specific to HCG, you can see HCG fits into the um, recognition site there, the specific site, okay, so we've got those. We also have some more um, of the same monoclonal antibody, but this time they don't have a bead on them, and what happens is they get stuck to a, the surface in the uh, pregnancy test strip, and we call that being immobilized. So if something is immobilized, it's stuck down on the surface. Now we also need another type of monoclonal antibody, and this type of monoclonal antibody is actually an antibody against this antibody. So it specifically binds to this antibody. Now I've just done it simply here, but you, and you don't need to know what's going on, but it basically recognizes this antibody and binds to it. So it's an anti-antibody antibody, which is a bit of a mouthful. So we just say it's an antibody against the HCG monoclonal antibody. So we're gonna need all these things for it to work. So let's have a look at the pregnancy test strip and how it works. So here is our pregnancy test strip. And what you have in the strip is you have a lo load of plastic, basically, and two windows that you can see the inside of. But you can't really see what's going on underneath, so if we remove the top cover, you can see that there are a number of um, different antibodies in different places. So here we've got um, monoclonal antibodies against HCG with the little blue beads. And they are actually sort of free to move within the strip. It's sort of absorbent material under here. Um, that um, and they can move through that. In the results window we've got monoclonal antibodies that are specific for HCG as well and they're the immobilized ones so they're stuck down on the surface here and then in the control window we have got the anti-monoclonal antibody antibodies. So we've got our immobilized antibodies here and we've got our antibodies against these antibodies stuck down in the control window. 
So how does it work? So if a woman is pregnant, what will happen is she'll urinate on this end of the stick here, which is absorbent, and the urine will flow over and it will have HCG. And it will move along the test strip and some of it will bind to the monoclonal antibodies because they're specific, so the monoclonal antibodies here will bind to the HCG, but actually quite a lot of them won't bind to any HCG at all. And they'll move through from the reaction window, or reaction zone rather, to the results window. And some of the monoclonal antibodies here will bind to the immobilized ones because the H they bind into the HCG. Okay. So the monoclonal antibodies are bound to the strip, bind to HCG molecules, which I've also got now got the blue bead attached to them, so we get this little blue window. And then the unbound ones carry on going all the way through and they bind in the control window. And we get the two blue lines. So you can see here the anti monoclonal anti-HCG monoclonal antibodies with the blue bead that did not bind to the um, HCG get bound to the specific antibodies stuck to the test strip and so you get a second blue line in the control window and that shows you that the test is complete. You have to have this one to show that the test has actually worked. Now if you're not pregnant when the urine comes down there's obviously no HCG but all the monoclonal antibodies move through from the reaction zone they go straight past the results window because there's no HCG for these antibodies to bind to and then these antibodies here get stuck and bind to the anti-HCG antibody antibodies here. Okay, so and this just gives us a single line. So we get no line in the results window, we get a single line in the control window. And that's how you know you're not pregnant. Hopefully that makes sense.